I use Style and Wren's Badger Black Primer in the airbrush. I did uh, Rattle Can the first black primer. Uh, the first coat of uh, primer on him, I did. I did do a rattle can, but for little touch-ups like this, and we want to get, we want to make sure that we have a very, very even coat of primer on this because this is essentially the base coat for the armor. So we want to make sure that all the nooks and crannies and all everything is black and kind of up to snuff because we're not going to do another, we're not going to do another black. Everything from here on out is going to be the metallic and the ink for the armor. So. And this doesn't just work for metallic armor, this works for a lot of different, for really whatever, really whatever you want to do. Like when I do my Blood Angels, uh, I do a red ink glaze over highlight colors and stuff before I do the, the ink glaze, and the ink glaze is what gives the armor its vibrancy uh, and that's a cool technique i'll be painting a bunch of those on stream too um not on commission those are for myself sorry one second so now that we've done that we're going in with the tinny tin from vallejo and we're going to do the first round of highlights. This isn't like an overall base coat. This is this is a highlight. So we want to leave the shadows black because we want we want a lot of contrast and we want the shadows to be black black. So it's just going to be like black and then gone over with a black ink. So it's going to be obviously uh, black. It's not going to be, we don't, want, we don't necessarily want a metallic in the shadows. So, and that's going to accentuate the highlights. So, this is Vallejo Tinny Tin, just thinned down, shot out of the airbrush. Uh, very, very close to Tin Bits. I think Tin Bits was a little bit more purple than this stuff, but I love this color. This is my go to for like brass and stuff. Um, so, same thing as we did, same thing as I do like for the step-by-step -step tutorials, basically the areas we want to focus on, the head, shoulders, knees and toes, top of the arms, top of the backpack, essentially. Um, obviously it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more involved than that, but not really. Yeah, this is like an inexact, inexact science with the tinny tin. These are going to be black. These armatures here. I'll paint the, I'll paint like the little balls, the ball joints there. I'll paint silver. But the armatures themselves, I want to be the same color as the armor. So they're integrated. They have the same look uh, as the armor does. And it, and it looks like a natural part of his war gear versus being a completely different color. And the thing about Tinny Tin, through the airbrush, it doesn't spray great. This is not like a butter smooth uh, finish. There's spatter, you can especially see like on his leg, there's spatter. That's actually good for what we're doing with it. Um, if you were painting like storm casts or something in this color, it would not be ideal. Um, 
because obviously you want a smooth, you want a smooth blend. I'd probably use a different paint, but because we're doing this black glaze and because we're doing this kind of metallic armor, uh, that provides a little texture. It provides a little, it does provide a little interest. Um, most of that spatter is going to be canceled out. Most of that spatter can be canceled out by the ink anyway. It's just not strong enough. It's just not strong enough to hold up to the ink glaze. So we're not really concerned about it, um, but it will. So like top half of the backpack, we got this little thing. We got the butt plate, got the hip plate, got the side of the greave over there. So this is looking pretty good for our first. And of course his hands are going to be silver. This is a little bionic half arm up here. So we're not too concerned about that. Um, let me get a little bit more light on the situation. There we go. So that's our first, but you can see like the shadows, shadows are still black. He's still black underneath there. He still has black on his shins. He's still black on the inside of the leg and, you know, bits of the helmet, the gorget, shoulder pad. So we want him to be that real black to metallic because the black ink is going to cover up the kind of um, the thinner edges of the tin bits are going to get covered tin bits, tin tin, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, those are going to get covered by the black ink as well. They're going to get really muted by the black ink. So, um, so this is, this is a little exaggerated is what I'm trying to say. Next up is uh, Vallejo Metal Color Dark Aluminum. This stuff does spray well. So we'll have, we'll have a little bit more control, which is good because we don't want this to be super crazy. We don't want this to be as prevalent as the, the tinny tin. This is really a highlight color. So front of the helmet, top of the pad, top of the pad and it's going to look strange. I mean, this is going to look like doo-doo at this stage. Um, this is not, this is not going to make a whole lot of sense color wise at this stage of, of, of its life, but all will become clear in due time. Top of the knee, top of the knee, Top of the foot and kind of the lower leg area there. Top of the foot, lower leg area there. A little front of that thing. That might have been a little heavy, but that's fine. I don't worry about that. A little bit on the arm there, a little bit on the arm there, up there. Kind of front of the arm, front there. Little bit of little on the hip there, little tiny little on the hip there, a little bit on the side of the leg, back of the foot, back of the foot, bottom of this thing, top of the backpack, there, there, little, little tiny spritz on the butt plate. That was probably too much on the butt plate, but, and that's it. That's that's our first. So you can see it goes from that silver through the tinny tin on the shoulder there. It goes from the silver through the tinny tin and down to black. Same on, oops, I missed the outside of this. Oops, that was a little much. That's okay. I'm not going to worry about that. Um, so you can see, like, generally we have the highlights. So you can see, like, that's a pretty well... That's a pretty well highlighted miniature. It just isn't the right color. Minor inconvenience. Details, details. So we want to clean that out pretty well. Backflow it, all that good stuff. 
make sure it's empty, make sure the needle's clean. And then just using water, we're gonna thin out this ink tense black because this stuff is insanely pigmented. So if we were to just if we were to just spray this black ink, it would just turn the model black. So like here you can see it's like one drop, one drop of this black ink. Let me pop that bubble there. Ooh, there we go. So one drop of this black ink is extremely like that's it going over white going over purple it's extremely dense um it's essentially like a little bit transparent paint extremely densely pigmented so we're gonna have to thin that down a pretty good amount because we want it to be very transparent So like this is what's in the cup right now. That's probably still a little too dark. So we're going to do a little bit more water. And I'm using water because I do want it to be watery. I do want it to be very, very thin. I don't want it to be, that's probably good. That's probably good there. So you can see the difference between the watered down black and just straight out of the bottle black. But I want it to be watery because I want it to be thin. We're gonna do very, very thin, very controlled. Very thin, very controlled uh, glaze. With this. So you can see just how thin, just how thin that is. So, and we're just going to start with an overall, just a little whisper. So we don't, you absolutely cannot rush and just start spraying this stuff all around willy-nilly because it's gonna it's gonna pool it's gonna run it's gonna give you coffee stains and watermarks and all those terrible terrible things that overly thin paints do when you apply too much and that's bad we want to avoid that so this is, this is the only part of painting this armor that's actually time consuming, is just doing these layers of this black ink, thin down. But it'll also, it kind of reaches a critical mass where it's not, where it's kind of building on itself. It's not building on that kind of slick metallic pigment. It's building on the kind of dried ink, the dried acrylic pigment, and it starts to it starts to work a little faster then. Um, but we're just like keep moving to give the previous layer time to dry. But you can see like on this right leg, it's starting to go black. It's starting to get that black. Like this is getting darker here on the side. Just give it a quick little, and then shoulders starting to to dull. Like you can see on the top of that, on the top of that little sensor array, it's still white. It's still a little silver, but it's definitely turning black. So we're starting to see we're starting to see some results here, but we just got to keep. Keep going, keep glazing. And if you see something, whoops. If you see something like a little damp or a little wet, skip it, come back to it. There's plenty more of this model to glaze. Gotta get these arms. Little box. Whoops, that was a little heavy. 
That was a little heavy, but it was on the holster, so I'm not particularly concerned about that. Because the holster, we're going to paint leather anyway. So it's not, it's not somewhere that I need to concern myself with right now. I'm going to paint over it with, you know, opaque colors that just, that'll just cover that right now. So not at all worried about the holster. There we go. A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Keep glazing, keep glazing. All day we'd be glazing. So you can see this is starting to really, this is starting to really go black. But you have that, and this is going to dry a little satin, so it's going to look a little, a little shiny. Uh, the ink is a satin ink. But after we finish this step, we're going to hit it, we're going to hit it with a little matte, a little matte varnish. And just so, just so we can see everything better, just so we can kind of see the shapes, we can see where where our highlights are, where maybe we need to do a little bit more glazing. Um, but you can see this guy is, and this is, is a little wet. I went a little heavy on that last round of, of glaze because I get, I get a little impatient. So, uh, definitely on this arm here. See, you can see a little on that arm. I, I sprayed a little heavy. You can see up here how it kind of gets that a little bit mottled kind of look to it. Not ideal. Um, but again, that's all the way up there on that servo arm. I'm not, I'm not concerned about that. So we're also going to, we're going to do some sponge weathering, uh, sponge chipping, which is what we're going to do instead of edge highlighting. Um, as much as I love edge highlighting, it just doesn't work for this scheme. Uh, I mean, it might, but it would also take forever. And for kind of this gritty, this gritty metallic scheme that we're doing to do like a super clean edge highlight just wouldn't, wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense. Um, and it wouldn't, I don't think, contribute to the overall look that we're going for, which is this very, it is Iron Hands. It's also like a little Iron Warriors a little bit, like this very gritty, weathered, beat up, you know, we're pissed off because our Primark got killed kind of look. So now like you hold it back here, that's a black, that's a black model, right? That's a black, that's black armor now. But when you get them up and you get them in the, and you get them in the light, you can see like that left leg has a little, has a little bit of brown to it, has a little bit of that brassy brass. The front of the foot is still too light, but there's that little, there's definitely a metallic sheen to his armor, and that's exactly what we want. Um, let me hit that shoulder a little more. That's exactly what we want, but we don't want it to just look, you know, metallic. We want it to look black, but because we're doing this in glaze and it's transparent while the color, like the color of the aluminum, the dark aluminum doesn't come through, you know, nobody's like, Oh wow, that's a nice dark aluminum highlight. The light will be able to reflect off the metallic pigment in the paint underneath and give it a metallic look. That's why like Alpha Legion, when they do the clear blue and the clear green and stuff like that over the top of silver, um, still looks metallic because the light's still reflecting off that metallic pigment in the paint underneath the, the ink layer, the transparent ink layer. So I am pleased, pleased as punch, I think is a way to put that with how that turned out. And that was 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes. And his armor is dialed. Like his armor's dialed in. 
And then, so we'll do a little quick color, quick compare. This guy's had like an oil wash and like a bunch of other stuff. Chipping, but for as far as the starting point goes, Phyros might even be a little darker, but you can still see those elements in the test marine that I did for this scheme. Phyros looks a little darker, but that's okay, because this guy looked a little variation never hurt anybody. Uh, but he is pretty good to go. I mean, he's definitely got a metallic, metallic feel to him. He's definitely black. It's definitely a black armor scheme. And that's what we want. We want both those things to translate to the eye. It's black and it's definitely metallic. So we succeeded on that. And so now another fun part of this is the edge highlighting portion of the